Let's welcome the founder, Peter Bandalo. He's in fact had a very torrid recovery from COVID, but he's been played brave enough to fly down from Copenhagen in Denmark, which is the headquarters of the Sugar Prize, to be here. Thank you, Peter. And of course, uh, Tagore's genius and Peter's passion is why we're all here this evening. His passion for literature, for arts, and for India as well. I now request His Excellency the Ambassador of Denmark, Freddy Swane, to say a few inaugural words. So I think we are ready. I'm audible. Yes? You can hear me? Yes? Um, I think I start on a formal note by um, really uh, welcoming all of you. It's great to see so many uh, good, strong, passionate faces here. And of course to uh, welcome Peter and Simona here. I feel really thrilled to be given the honor to say a few words to start with. I have to admit, I've been nine years as ambassador to India, so I've seen ups and downs. I have seen things that you won't believe, things that you hardly can imagine, but I have a strong, strong sense, strong conviction that this nation has to survive, has to really shape the world ahead. While I'm saying that is, of course, that I got so inspired when I started reading about Tagore. I have to admit, before coming to India, I had never heard about Tagore. Huh? It's amazing. So what are you doing, you, the Indians, uh, to promote the legacy, the poetry, the written words, even his artworks? What are you doing? You should promote him. He's a legacy. And I call him one of the founding fathers, founding fathers of modern independent India. He was a strong man. He was really so, let's say, convinced that through words you can shape the future. And you can. And if you look back to some of his poems and whatever he has written, and of course your national anthem, it gives you a lot of confidence that this great nation called India it's a strong nation, and it will always be part of our thoughts and the way forward. I claim, rightly or wrongly, that there is no future without India, whether it comes to all the issues that we have to deal with or things that might come to us in the later kind of development. We need India. We need a strong India. But a strong India has to do with the legacy. I come from a small country with only 6 million inhabitants. Six million. And how many of you are here? 130 crores. It's huge. But Denmark, we had a famous writer, fairy tale writer, and he is perhaps not to the same extent known to you. Of course, you know Tagore. But there's no culture without writers who can express the emotions, emotions, the sentiments of the people forming, shaping a nation and its culture. And I have 
to say, this year we have seen a war, a war in Europe. That war is not to be believed. I was born in the strong conviction that we will only see peace, stability and harmony. And yet we see something which is going against all that. It's sad. But the only way around this is to have people who will express the emotions and the sentiments of all of us. And I can't think of any better than Tagore. He is no more. He came to Denmark, in fact. Perhaps Peter and Simona, that inspired you, I don't know. But he came to Denmark and he brought kind of, he opened our minds back in 1921, I think it was. I was not alive at that point of time, but uh, somebody spoke about it. But without legendary poets, writers, authors, cultural personalities, we will not be able to confront ourselves in what we are doing and why we should do things differently. So today there will be a number of prizes after this terrible pandemic. Uh, now we are here physically and now we'll have some awardees uh, within social achievement and of course literature. And you might think it's two different things, two different worlds apart, but it's not true. Social achievement, how do you develop a society? How do you secure that each and every will have a role and a contribution in our society. And you are 130 crore people here in India. And I have met, not all of them, but I have met many, from people who are almighty to people who have nothing. Those who I found most interesting, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, are those people who are living really at the bottom of the pyramid. Why? Because they are having a hope. They are building up a hope and they are trying to really to survive. But those who are trying to survive, they will bring a change which is needed. Whether we like it or not, those who are at the bottom of the pyramid, they will inspire us. And I've been to all kinds of villages or hamlets across India, and where I've met people who really had something despite awful conditions, living conditions, are those people who have nothing. But if they have some literature, some poetry in mind, then they will add a lot to the society. Social achievement is important. We think we are rich. Yes, we are rich. I'm a rich, welfare-based Dane. And we pay a lot of tax. And tax is an investment in your society. So if you're trying to tell your uh, chartered accountant, I don't want to pay tax. In fact, when you're trying to optimize your tax payments, in fact, you are taking away the future of the next generations. Therefore, you have to invest in your society. And if you can bring social development, social achievement into the picture, I think we are where we have to be. So I think Tagore, is a role model in modern buzzwords. Without Tagore, where would the uh, kind of common le le legacy be of India? Every time we stand up when the national anthem is played, and I even myself have learned many of the words in your national anthem. And I feel proud and pr full of pride when I'm listening and trying to sing some of these important words. A social fabric. Social cohesion is needed, and without poets, without writers, without famous professors from all kinds of universities in India and across, we'll be nowhere. In Denmark, we, had, we still have a very famous castle called Elsinore, and Shakespeare, professor, he wrote a piece about Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. And he also said, to be or not to be. And I tell you, I have been to that castle many times. 
and I got so inspired. So whatever we are doing, what I'm doing, what you are doing has to be, has to be or not to be. And I will urge all of you, being inspired by Tagore, let's not be out of the picture. Let's have to be because we have to exist. We have to change. We have to bring new context to whatever we are doing in our daily life. So I hope you are okay with what I'm saying to you tonight. If you don't like it, you can invite me for next year. Uh, but emotions, sentiments are so important. And politicians cannot express emotions and sentiments. Only writers, filmmakers, and whatever, cultural personalities can express the real hearts and souls and minds and even our body in the uh, uh, art language. So be smart, do art. Danjavat, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that entertainment, Your Excellency. It, it was a speech. <laughs> <laughs> but good speeches are entertaining. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, let me also just say that Tagore Prize is very obliged to the India International Center uh, and to its director, Mr. Sri Vastava, uh, you know, who's welcomed the Tagore Prize uh, to the IIC family. Uh, he's, of course, uh, uh, you know, occupied in the administrative services, looked after forest, revenue department, etc. But most importantly, is compassionate and uh, lovable. So we'd invite him to say a few words as well, please. His Excellency, uh, Mr. Uh, Freddy, Peter Bandalo, founder of uh, this prize, ladies and gentlemen, as you all are aware, IIC has been set up basically with one prime objective of promoting uh, fraternity uh, throughout the world. Uh, we are basically a place where we invite scholars, all the you know people, uh, good people of the world, uh, to be here, exchange ideas with each other, and promote promote universal brotherhood and fraternity. Uh, in that uh, sense, the objective of uh, you know this prize, which is founded by Peter and his uh, team, uh, and uh, our you know objective uh, are converging. Uh, I am very happy uh, to be here uh, with uh, you and to participate in this uh, program. Uh, because the initiative what uh, Peter has taken is really very laudable. Uh, here, you know, through this uh, you know, foundation, they are recognizing the contribution made in the field of literature and social service. Uh, this, uh, though it is only five year old, but it has already made a big name for itself. Uh, COVID interrupted them, so also everyone else. We also had our own uh, share of you know, suffering in this COVID period. But I'm happy that all those bad days are now left behind and we are now moving forward. And uh, this prize is back. So I would not like to say much uh, except uh, to wish good health to Peter and uh, you know his entire team. And uh, I would like to see that this prize uh, ceremony takes place every year as it used to in the past. And I would like to congratulate in advance all those people who are going to get the awards today. So with these few words, once again, I thank each one of you for giving this opportunity to be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Srivastava. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of eminent poet, Mr. Shok Vajpai, who I can see quietly hidden at the back. <laughs> Why don't you come a little closer, Shokji? <laughs> All right, okay. He's also, of course, running the, the Raza Foundation, which is doing amazing work in the field of culture. All right, well, somebody who um, loves our culture as well, uh, he's also a doctor, advisor, personal physician to Hollywood stars, uh, music industry legends, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and sports stars as well. Wonder if Messi's on the list, but uh, his, his skill in dealing with pain and health issues is so incredible that he's the preferred doctor at top international events, including the Oscars, the Grammys, the Emmys, the Golden Globe, Miss Universe, the Tagore Awards as well. And uh, Dr. George Gothi III, we'd be pleased if you could make a short address as well. Well, 
thank you all for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure and definitely an honor to be present here. Uh, flying halfway uh, across the world to get here from Chicago, I have to state that my arm's a little bit tired, but I, I'm doing okay. So a little humor here too this evening. So but to, get to the, get to the point of things. Pictographs, 30,000 to 100,000 years old. Clay tablets, papyrus, paper, electric data, lasting communication, impression on the world. I was communicated with today also in the streets of Delhi, which was kind of fun. Beep, beep, a lot of that going on. So, to all the Tagore Prize contributing authors, ideas, innovation, dreams, facts, thoughts, sleepless nights, blood, sweat, and tears, hard labor of love. Today we celebrate their contribution to the Tagore Prize. As Julia mentioned, Dr. George Gauthier, a Hollywood doctor, and to say a few words, the Academy Awards usually give people about two minutes up on stage. I'll see if I can uh, uh, accept that challenge and not be here very long. So, all the contributing authors, in my mind, are all heroes. And in the times, these trying times we've had with COVID and things around the world, we need heroes. And we all have our own personal heroes out there, like Tagore, and we like to share their ideals. So each and every one of us has our personal heroes that are dear to us. And we need those heroes now, because some 24 years ago, a mentor mentioned to me that darkness and evil gather easier than light. But when light comes together, this darkness is utterly destroyed and defeated. And then it is time to celebrate, like being here today and tonight. So when light comes together, and like now, on this occasion, there is celebration. Finally, we get to meet in person versus communicating with just being over Zoom and things of that nature. And so when this light gathers, it is time to celebrate. <clears throat> that mentor that mentioned this was Mr. Peter Bundelow, founder of the event. And uh, a round of applause, please, for Peter. So, thank you. So, like Tagore, we are all beings of light and all unique. I encourage you and challenge you to shine more and brighter, to become the best you that you can be for this world and promote more peace. I've been the doctor for the Grammy and Academy Awards the last 23 years and other award shows. And it's my honor to serve all humankind, mind, body, and soul. So please use your gifts also that are out there for this planet too. So share them and, uh, and be honored. I am thrilled to have received the Humanitarian Award for the Degore Prize in 2022, this year. And I thank you. So what's next? Continuing in my 25-year war in human trafficking by educating people the signs of what human trafficking looks like and to intercept it before it happens, teaching in schools for just venues and to parents and kids. So in the United States, we have Operation Underground Railroad. And we have a signal that we teach kids in schools that if they're being trafficked or threatened. And that signal I'd like to share with India at this point is, if you have a child bump into you a little roughly or pull on your pant leg, and they may not want to be noticed with the person they're with. And the signal is this, if something wrong is going on and they need to be rescued immediately, that signal is this. They take your thumb, like they take their thumb, they go like this, and they make this signal. So I want to teach this to all of India, too. So when people are being trafficked, that's when, if you see this, you call your emergency number. In America, it's 911, okay? You have a different emergency number here. And immediately summon the authorities. Take the child away from that person, show them the phone that you've notified the authorities, and they will run and you will save that person. Okay, and I think that's very important. So, <clears throat> so we show the sign over that. Um, I also, number two, uh, I will assist in the making with the DeGore Foundation, a major Hollywood, Bollywood collaboration, a film and TV series to help end human trafficking. So, I will also uh, give an impactful info on the Dr. George Show, when East meets West, when we share this information when it comes to medical 
So something that has been sadly lacking. There's so much knowledge over here in India when it comes to Ayurvedic medicine that, that some of the world knows, but has want, we have more impact in that. So we want to have East meet West on that and have the TV show on that also. So I'd like you all people to shine and connect with the light, like Tagore, and make this world a better place. To be continued, illuminate all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, that was a, a wonderful line you said in between about being the best uh, that we can be because it just reminded me, I'm just going to go completely off track, but I'll just say it anyway because it's inspiring. I once interviewed the great American sprint legend Carl Lewis and I asked him that, what is the one, one thing that has inspired you the most? And he used that line. He said, my coach told me, just be the best that you can be. And that one thing is what inspired him to become an Olympic champion four times over. All right, before carrying on, just uh, want to also acknowledge the presence of um, the Deputy Ambassador of um, Taiwan, who's just come in, Mr. Chen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now, this year, as we've mentioned before, the 11 shortlisted authors vying for the Tagore Prize. Uh, they'll all be presented as special certificates, so even if you don't actually win the prize, you can collect that at the end of the program. Um, this event, by the way, is also being uh, recorded and available for viewing now and later on at the, at the Tagore Prize's social media platforms. I'm our Pranay Manish. It's very famous. And you can also join us. Uh, if you know this composition, you can join us. Okay? So, yes, so join us. Amar prani re manushe, achi prani tai hiri tai shokal khani. Amar prani re manushe, achi prani tai hiri tai shokal khani.
India and the world and I think Tagore at this point of time will be smiling uh, from way up there uh, he really believed in internationalism and he took issue with Mahatma Gandhi about the idea of nationalism he believed that it was it was something that would come to haunt uh, India and the world if he continued to only emphasize on the idea of nationalism and here to have Peter uh, from Denmark, uh, providing this prize. Uh, in his earlier avatar, it was sponsored by his colleague from Croatia. It's really befitting, I think, that we have all of this international relations and people all the way from Chicago uh, helping us with this particular prize. So, Peter, thank you for your continued effort in bringing awareness about Ravindranath Tagore and so much that he stood for. For all of us here, uh, 
Ashok ji is sitting here and Ambassador Cengiz has just come in. Uh, we are in difficult times. It's not just the war uh, that we're seeing in Ukraine and in Russia, but it's also the forgotten wars of Afghanistan, of Syria and Libya, of Ethiopia and so many other parts of the world that we're confronted with. What can we do? There's many things that we can do, and I think the responsibility is not just of governments, but it's of individuals like us to push back on hatred and push back on violence. Uh, it's too easy, uh, as the ambassador said and Roger said, uh, to resort to violence and to hatred. It's the easiest thing. And I remember in Chicago many years ago when we used to run the Ion India Festival, we used to work in, in South Chicago, which was a you know, fairly unsafe place to be in. And what the city used to be the, uh, doing then, Mayor Daly's office, they used to give us a projector and the screen and a popcorn machine. And we used to bring in films and do workshops in the parks, in the local parks. And on this one particular occasion, as I was standing at the back of this particular garden, one side was uh, African Caribbean Americans and the other side was Latinos doing their uh, barbecue and at the back with the homeless people, with the drug addicts. And standing against the chain link fence, I was talking to them and I heard a popping sound. And I said jokingly, oh, it must be a drive-by shootout. And I turned around and there was a car who shot a child in a pram and the mother pushing the pram. So we stopped the film and I said to the community, I said, is this the kind of community that you wish to live in? Is there no way that you can create an opportunity and build trust within yourselves so you stop this kind of meaningless violence and the loss of life? It was a community that came together and they created the Neighborhood Watch, which continues to this day, and sadly it's only three or four blocks in South Chicago, but they have been able to reduce the amount of crime that happens there. So it is our responsibility not just a government's responsibility or the United Nations responsibility or Peter's responsibility, but really the responsibility of each and every one of us to push back on the climate of hatred that seems to be overtaking the narrative uh, that's out there. On the other hand, the positive side is the other day in Varanasi, and Peter's been there and Umesh Bhai from the Kabir Mat is here. I remember a gentleman coming up to me and saying, uh, you know, Sanjayji, whatever you hear and see about the divide in Varanasi is not true. We in the old city have lived together for hundreds of years and will continue to do so. The narrative of divide that you're hearing and seeing is really coming from outside. Be rest assured that it's not in the name of God that we will kill. It's not in the name of God that we will divide. But it's in the name of God that we hope that we are able to spread a message of peace and a message of empathy. And that's something that the Kabir Mat and the Kabir Panth do across the world. So it's not just individuals anymore. But we all need to come together more and more to be able to do so. The arts is an important aspect of this. It really cuts across every kind, whether it's the environment or climate crisis or social enterprise or innovation. The arts cuts across all of this. That's why it's important. And considered knowledge in a place, as we are able to put it out in so many different platforms, that's what sort of pushes back on the climate of ignorance. And by pushing back against ignorance, you push back against hatred. And by pushing back against hatred, you push back against violence. So thank you all, Peter, once again, and to the Tagore uh, Prize and everybody involved with it. Thank you for coming here to India year after year, despite all of the problems. To you, good health. I know it's been difficult. You've had long COVID. But, you know, as they say, you have the energy that will make you continue to do this. Thank you for bringing the professor out here from Chicago. And we wish you the very best to continue with this, with this prize, not just in your lifetime, but even beyond it, because it's very important for us. And this is 1914. And he said, please send me more. And she continuously translated there in New York, sent it to, and as a result of you know, that great interest in Tagore, this work continued for the next 10 years. 
There were more than 22 books that were translated by this pair in Spain, in Spanish. So this is completely, you know, you cannot see this kind of an example anywhere in the world except for, you know, uh, uh, Shakespeare, you know, uh, and some other Western poets. But this kind of an interest, continuous interest, and they started translating. Now, because of this translation, of course, uh, you know, this, some of it in the beginning, it reached, you know, Latin America. And the, these most important countries, I cannot go into the whole, all the Latin American countries, Mexico and, uh, you know, Argentina. These were some of the countries where, you know, a great interest was taken independently of the work of Juan Ramon Jimenez. Now, you just imagine in the days of the revolution, Mexican revolution in Mexico, there appears in 1910 a group of literary cultural figures, you know, who start an institute, who start, who actually, uh, you know, protest against the dictatorial tendencies of the dictator Porfirio Diaz, and as, how do they protest? They form a group, a group called Ateneo de, Madre, Ateneo de, de la Juventud, Ethnium of uh, Youth, and they, some of these Latin American great scholars, along with the Mexican person, Mexican individual, Mexican uh, literary and cultural figure, Jose Vasconcelos. He was called the caudillo of the revolution. And they started uh, working, they started working towards the expansion of the idea. Now, but the revolution was on. So this, his, this gentleman, Jose Vasconcelos, had to go to the United States and from there till the, you know, last part of the revolution, he had already read, you know, uh, Tagore's, all the translations that were coming out from Spain as well as from Latin America. The first Gitanjali translation was done in 1917 uh, by a Bolivian writer, imagine. And the Juan Ramon Jimenez pair, Juan Ramon and uh, Zenobia, they had not translated Gitanjali. That was not the first work they did. So Gitanjali came later, but they were uh, actually interested in looking at the entire work of Tagore and giving as much as possible in Spanish. Now, because of this interest, there was another Argentinian, 1917. He's, he, 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 he saw the uh, 100, poems of, 100 poems of Kabir and he saw in this work, in this particular work, the great possibility of influencing the Argentine society at that time, which was going through a lot of hatred. And he translated 100 poems of Kabir, and in 1917 that is published, and which has a tremendous impact in other uh, Latin American countries as well. Now, I'm not going into the other publications from the other countries, but you know, Mexico, Argentina, uh, you know, and just imagine, uh, only recently, you know, continuous discovery of Tagore is on in Costa Rica, in many other countries, a lot of other books were being translated. Jose Vasconcelos from the United States, he, you know, brought in, uh, you know, four most important works in Spanish, which was, which was, you know, uh, nationalism, personality, uh, 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 La Luna Nueva, the, the crescent moon. You know, and from these books he derived the great example for the Mexican people. When he came back from the United States, the Mexican Revolution was successful. He was brought back to become the Education Minister, Secretario de la Educación, you know, uh, Elena Barrera Agrawal, she has, uh, she found Tagore being translated, Gitanjali being translated by a Cuban, uh, you know, literary figure in 1913. So we have just discovered, hardly three years ago, that the first translation of Gitanjali was done 
not in 1917 or 15, but 1913, which was published in a Cuban uh, magazine, literary magazine. This is, so the continuous interest in Tagore, finding out more, you know, his plays being, uh, uh, his educational ideas being uh, put up by various institutions, uh, including in Brazil. So this is a continuous process. We can see, you know, I will repeat, we can see that it, it is in this Hispanic society that Tagore has lived much more than when he had disappeared. You know, Foster and uh, Lukács and, you know, uh, uh, in fact, a, a very well-known uh, Peruvian writer, poet, uh, you know, Cesar Vallejo, he was in uh, Paris at that time. So these people were actually finding Tagore to be a representative of the, uh, the empire of the British people. So there was a tremendous uh, setback. Even some of the Spanish, uh, uh, you know, great, you know, uh, champions of Tagore in the beginning, they uh, saw that Tagore's realism was something uh, not desirable. It was not a positivist realism. So, so they become critical. But finally, this dialectics between the positive and the negative side of it it, 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 it was settled by the fact that people started accepting. So it was a popular reaction. When, uh, whenever I went to Spain, I found in every house I visited of friends, you know, he would take out from the shelf a book of Tagore, a book by Tagore or two books by Tagore. These were sources for, of my, my research also. So this Hispanic reception is something unprecedented and I'm sure that the, the, the latest work of this film uh, would be uh, uh, shown by, by, by Suraj Kumar, who is the co-producer of that film. And I, I, I do not know whether I can request him to come here and say a few words now or later that you will decide. But I, with this, you know, I, I, because of the limitations of time, I cannot go into more things. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Ganguly. That was actually quite an eye-opener. You mentioned about Suraj Kumar, so in fact, that would be a good point uh, for that. He's a filmmaker from Johnson Suraj Films International, made the film titled Thinking of Him, the first motion picture ever made on Tagore, film by director Pablo Cesar. So I'm going to give a short intro, and then we'll see a trail of the film. Um, also, just to, to let you know that there is tea and coffee outside, so while we're not going to disrupt the program, but if anybody wants to just step out for a minute um, and come back quickly, uh, you can do that. Thank you. Come. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you, uh, Peter, for giving me this uh, golden opportunity to present the small, uh, short time duration of the trailer. So, uh, in fact, I uh, met Peter through the common friend, journalist friend, Murtaza Ali Khan, and he said that you had made a film on Tagore. Do you know, do you know that there is a, a, a prize uh, award in the name of Tagore? So I said no. So he introduced me and he talked to me about the prize and also, you know, so I would al also like to thank Murtaza and uh, the Peter and his old uh, uh, team. So, so my my association with this film started when uh, uh, the Indian ambassador who was posted over there, Mr. Amrinder Khatwa. So he in introduced me to my Argentinian partner. It was in 2015. So, in fact, the producer, the director Pablo Caesar, he was looking for the Indian producer since so many years. So when he connected me and said, Suraj, will you do this film? So, I, in fact, I was in planning to you know make. Uh, some movie. I was busy in government uh, documentaries and all. So that is how this film came to uh, my uh, this thing, my project. So and it was started. Uh, I signed co-production agreement in 2016, 2017. I it was the closing film in IFI, and it has travelled to many uh, international film festival, India, Bangladesh, uh, Taiwan, Taiwan. There was Asia Pacific Film Festival. So my film was selected in the uh, art category. So in New York, in Buenos Aires, so it was in many international film festivals. So I, I just wanted to share you, I, I think uh, trailer is, uh, will you play this? Okay. 
so it's a 3 minutes trailer so i i hope you will like it thank you so much We are counting down now to the award. The awards. In fact, just uh, one more act left between um, between now and the awards. So just a couple of minutes more, and we'll be there. But um, very quickly, from Kabir Mutt in Varanasi, we bring you the individual who speaks, sings, and lives Kabir. Please welcome Omesh Kabir. Kabira khada bazaar mein mange sab ki khair. Na kahu se dosti, na kahu se bair. I think you all are well acquainted this couplet. The another couplets where Kabir is saying, Kabira khada bazaar mein liye lukatha haath, jo ghar jare apna chale hamare saath. I have burned down my own house. The torch is still in my hand. He who is willing to burn down their house is welcome to join me. I Umesh Kabir from Kabir Chora Mat Mulgadi, and this is the place where Kabir lived for 120 years, and he spread the message of love and humanity to the world. I'm from there, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about this book which is 100 poems of Kabir. So there are certain questions in our mind because we are from that zone where people used to talk about Kabir. But the question is that why Ravi Tagore liked Kabir? What was the reason behind it? Why he wanted to translate Kabir's poem? What was the reason behind it? And for information, I would like to share with you all that Ravi Tagore has visited Ashram many times. <clears throat> when I'm saying ashram, certainly I'm talking about Kabir Chora Mat Mulgadi, which is Banaras. In our ashram, there are, there are certain people who used to talk that Rabina Tagore has spent a lot of time over there. He not visited once or twice, he visited 10 to 12 times Kabir Mat. And I hope and I think that was the reason somehow he was getting affected by the poems of Kabir and he translated. Once I was talking to one of the ashram sadhu and he was telling the story of his guru, he said, whenever Ravina Tagore used to come in ashram, he used to discuss the spirituality of Kabir. And just because of that, when I was, I was reading the, the, the Rabindra Tagore's poem, I found these glimpses of Kabir's poem. So there is <clears throat> the poem of Rabindra Tagore, what I'm going to read and then uh, the another couplet of Kabir. Where uh, Rabindra Tagore is saying, lead the chanting and singing and telling of beats. Whom dost thou worship in the lonely dark corner of the temple with doors all shut. Open thine eye and see thine God is not before thee. Here is, uh, he, he is here where the tiller is tilling the hard ground and where the path maker is breaking stones. He is with them in sun and in shower and his garment covered with dust. Put off the holy mantle and even like him come down on the dusty soil. So I remember this couplet of Kabir. Moko kaha dhoonhe re bande, mai to tere paas mein. Na mandir mein, na masjid mein, na kawe kailas mein. Khoji hot turat mil jaun, pal bhar ki talas mein. I translate for you all. This is the translation of uh, Ravina Tagorzi. O servant, where those thou seek me? Lo, I am beside thee. I am neither in temple nor in mosque. I am neither in Kaaba nor in Kalas. Neither am I in rites and ceremonies nor in yoga and renunciation. You see the glimpse of the effect of Kabir. If thou art a true seeker, thou shalt at once see me. That shalt me meet in the moment of time, Kabir says, O Sadhu, God is in the breath of all the breath. 
Do you see how Rabina Tagore has a glimpse of Kabir? And as you know that, the Rabina Tagore wanted to give the message of peace and compassion to the world. And that's what Kabir had done. And because of that only, Rabina Tagore visited Kabir Mat so many times and he wanted to understand Kabir very deeply so that he can, he can convey that message to the world. And that's what he done. Though I, I have written uh, more than 15 couplets of Kabir where I, was, I wanted to explain each one, but as I have seen that we are pressed by the time, so I'm not going to talk a lot about, but I, I think the message which is translated by the Rabindranath Tagore, which was related to Kabir, it is basically not only glimpse, but a deep understanding of spirituality, deep understanding of philosophical perplexities of our life. So we must understand this and go forward. That is the message of Kabir, and that's what I understand the message was Rabindranath Tagore. So thank you. Thank you all for listening to me. And thank you to Peter, brother, Simona, and all of you to just be with me. Thank you. Rabindra Nath Tagore Literary Prize for 2021-22. And um, I request uh, Pavan Pava to please come and uh, read the citations, and then uh, Peter Bundala will do the honors. So we're going to announce the two winners. So our first winner is Shobhana Kumar. I will try to be very fast for citation, but I'm supposed to do it, so just bear with me only very fast. Uh, for our book called Sky Full of Bucket List. What a delight is to read the combination of jazz like Cannon's Sharp and Profound Compassion, the insightful, virtuous, enigmatic collection of Hibben is loosely united around the theme of loss that, that doubles as an examination of melody, disability, and frailty of old age occasionally lifting off into a personal and poignant word. The observations are keen, conveyed in somber nuances that in memories perfectly define the conditions of displacement.